I bring to you this morning grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. We start a new mini-series this week, a uh, three-week one that's called How Following Begins. We're really trying to start at the basics. We walked through the, the first initial verses of John chapter 1, we'll learn, about, learn about who Jesus is and how he's laid out there and what John has described us. And we see this now as a great place, as an initial introduction for someone that's looking to follow Jesus for the first time. And now we get a chance to see how it works out in the life of the believers and see how that might play out in our lives and in leading someone else to follow Jesus as well. And as we look at that, uh, I think I, I want to first remind you of some words that maybe first came out of the mouth of an elementary school librarian who, as you're going in to go pick out your book as a little kindergartner or first grader or whatever the case may be, told you something like, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. My friends, when it comes to following Jesus, we are the cover. And that's the same message that we can and should be sharing as we are inviting other people to come along with us in this thing. Don't judge the book by its cover, by the first thing that you see of us Jesus followers, because there's so much more to it and so much more truth that, that maybe is even better revealed inside the book than what the cover can display. But most will judge by their first impression. And this is something we shouldn't take lightly either. As we look in, at the beginning of our service to confess our sins, to turn from the things that God directs us away from, this is something we also can and should take seriously because we know the world does judge the book by its cover. Because we know we are encouraged to, to be those that shine the light of Christ so that others can see it. So that they would wonder about our Father in heaven and how we would live a life the way that we live in. And sometimes people see that. Ones who are gracious and patient. Uh, a husband, a father, loving his family in self-sacrificial ways. It's a beautiful thing that, that people sometimes question, wonder about how could you stay in that? How could you continue to love your children that way? Well, it's the way my father loved me, so fathers, this is why we love our children this way as well. But so often they also see something far more than, or far less Christ-like in us. That we don't necessarily want to point to ourselves and say, yeah, look at me, this is what Christ's like looks like. Which makes it a puzzling endeavor for someone looking to follow Jesus and having this, having us, as the first face that they see. And thinking, maybe I'm not sure that I want that. I'm not sure that, that life looks any different than mine. But indeed it is. If we help them to see what's beyond the cover, what the truth that's behind it. And this is where our text begins for today. And, and we see initially in the text those that were looking for Jesus. And I realize not everybody's there, but, but there are some. And for those that were looking for someone, we see this ripple effect. Initially, John, uh, if you're looking at your Bibles or you want to pull that up on your smartphone and want to read along with me, I'm actually going to dive back a verse, a couple verses from where we started with the, the video this morning. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 33 is uh, where I'm going to begin. John, sorry, verse 32, John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, referring to Jesus. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And John's saying, I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. So at the very beginning, the first message that comes is, is, is one that was looking and by divine intervention knows that Jesus Christ, the one whom when, he, when John baptized John, Jesus in the river, the Spirit came down on him, the God spoke, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And he said, this is the one. And so he continued 
and the pointing. This is the one. And the ripple effect goes from there as he's pointing out this is the one, the Lamb of God, who will take away the sin of the world, which is where our text starts today, verse 36. Look, the Lamb of God. And we saw there his, his two disciples, sort of his two followers, rather, sort of pause and be like, oh, do we stay with John? Do we go with Jesus? And John's essentially saying, look, this is the one who we were waiting for. Go. And they go and they start following. They call him rabbi. They were getting it. They knew that, that he was the one that, that was fulfilling what had been told ahead. They would look for this one that is to come, one that you will learn from, like a rabbi, like a teacher. And, and the ripple effect goes from there. And they're off running and say, hey, hey, we found him. And they're telling their friends. They're telling their buddies, come and see. Come and see. Again and again, Jesus says as they're coming up to him, come and see. You, want, you know what you're looking for? Come and see. The, the next ones are told, come and see. And they said, oh, this is the one that Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets spoke. We have found the Messiah. Now there are some, some that doubt. As we see there, Nazareth. Where why in Nazareth? This is uh, verse 46. Uh, in verse 45, Philip had found Nathanael and told him, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the one whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? This is another one who was looking back in the scriptures, who knew what the prophecies were and, and where the Christ, the son of God, the promised one, was to come from. And he said he wasn't supposed to come from Nazareth. But indeed, Jesus was from Bethlehem, and then all the pieces lined up perfectly. And even for there, we see another divine intervention. Jesus says in verse 48, I saw you, Nathanael, while you were still under the fig tree, before Philip came and called you, before he told you about this. So we've seen... Divine intervention in two different places. John, who'd received a message, there's this spirit that's going to come down. Nathaniel, who was told by Jesus Christ himself, I saw you before he came to tell you about this. We see the, the ripple effect of people going and, and seeing and telling others and inviting them to come and see. I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily have people knocking down my door saying, do you know where the one is? I want to go and see him. Do you? I mean, this book is laying it out for those people. This is essentially identifying Jesus for dummies. If anybody needs that book, it's right here. This is who he is. We have all these lists of who he is, the Lamb of God, the rabbi, the one who Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets spoke about, the one from Nazareth. But so many aren't looking for any of that. And what about those who, for whom there is no divine intervention, who aren't looking for anything? I think about this third worship service we're looking to start here at Holy Cross with new eyes for how can we especially design a service that's accessible to those within our community, especially the 18 to 35-year-old group, people that maybe especially aren't looking who don't currently concern themselves with these things. Maybe ones who've heard about it have been turned off to it, who've been part of a church before, but just don't get how it connects to life now. Where do we begin? I have an illustration that I think will help us. Put yourself at your front door. Someone's just knocked on it. <clears throat> This person is, has this, this look on his face and sweat burning down his brow. His eyes are lit up bright. He says, hey, hey, I, I know you don't know me, but I got this really cool thing that I want you to come and see. Uh, if I were to explain it more to you, you wouldn't get it any more than you do right now. So just, just come, come and see. Come on, come on, I'm telling everybody about this. How many of you are going? I don't know if I'm going. <laughs> Sounds like you might have a van around the corner or something like that. But if you find yourself there, again, put yourself at that front door, the knock comes, and instead the face there is a familiar one. 
a best friend that says these very same things to you. There's this really cool thing down the street. I want to tell you about it. And if I explained it to you now, you wouldn't get it. So just come and see it. Are you going? Yeah. I think, I'm, at least I think I'm going. Maybe I'm a little more adventurous than most, but I, I think I'm going. I think I want to check this thing out because, because I trust the person that's telling me. They don't have to tell me anymore. I don't have to connect the dots anymore because I trust them. Relationships are at the core for our come and see today. No one will hear you or follow you as you follow Jesus unless they trust you, which really puts dads in a cool spot. Kids automatically look up to dads. That's my dad. You are in an awesome position to say, come and see, to be a blessing, to bring that joy into the life of your children and your grandchildren. Come and see. It was a truth that I saw exercised this week at VBS as we looked around the room, and I was told by some of the other parents there, I know some of these kids are our kids, but I see a whole bunch of other of them that are, must be their friends from school because they aren't ones regularly connected with Holy Cross. These kids have been saying, come and see. Brings me to that number three on the back of the bookmark. We encourage you guys to, on a weekly basis, ask through these questions. And then number three says, what kind of conversations are you having with people who are not yet following Jesus? And maybe as you think about answering that question, you thought, ah, well, I haven't been telling anybody about what the pastor has been preaching about. I haven't told anybody uh, about uh, how I'm praying for them yet. I haven't gotten any Jesus conversations and things. We've just been talking shop and talking kids and talking life and, and talking the weather and the beach and whatever else. My friends, good. It's real life. It's connecting with people. It's caring about them where they're at for who they are. And in the end, God uses that as he leads them to trust you. And he will open doors. And let me encourage you to look for those doors when you have the opportunity to share, come and see. Because with that trust, they can. But you might say to yourself, what am I asking them to come and see? Jesus isn't here. He's not going to do some divine intervention. He's not at church, even though some kids, when pastors stand up front here, or even during VBS this week, we had uh, an individual at church dressed in a white robe with purple across, big beard on here, and there were some kids saying, that's Jesus. Like, no, it's actually a skit. Uh, so what are we pointing them to come and see? That's exactly what our, our other two readings were about today. As we read from Romans chapter 10, the last verse was, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And then in Psalm chapter 1, it talks about, blessed is the man who, it talks about all these things, but the core of it all is, blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. Come and see means, stop just looking at the cover, but come and read the book. Come and watch the movie, however you want to get it. Come and see. Come and see the Word of God. Because, so my friends, the cover can't tell the whole story. It was never intended to tell the whole story. Fathers, as you look at yourselves and say, man, I am not the whole story and not what I want to point my kids to, that's fine. What you've done in the past, what's fallen short, isn't what defines what they come and see. You are not your family's savior. Jesus is. We are not our friends' saviors. Jesus is. We invite them all to come and see him. That's what we get to be heralds to say, that there's so much more than the cover can display. Come and see. This is where following begins. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.